Welcome to the National Season 2 Tekken 7 Conference Day number 3 We are on our third day guys And syempre papakilala ko muna yung ating mga casters We have Poch Pies and Raph How are you guys doing right now? Kamusta naman kayo? And uh, sana okay lang kayo dyan Ngayon lang tayo ulit nagkita-kita Yes, I really miss the Nationals feels I'm so excited Day number 3, we saw a lot that just happened And there's a lot to unpack Yes, tama ka dyan. Now, I know na excited na kayo sa mga matches natin, guys, and sa mga viewers natin dyan. But of course, we have to talk a lot, a lot of things that we have to talk about right now. Unang-una, uh, yung ating first match of the day, mainit na mainit agad. We have LPE Dojin versus Smart Omega Jules. What can you say about that, guys? You go ahead. Yeah, you know what? Dojin has a mark on his back already since the start of this conference. <laughs> he is at the top of the leaderboards. He's been playing his own version of bingo when it comes to characters. And Jules, you know, he has his own tier list. He doesn't really he 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 goes with he sticks with his guns. He sticks with his Marduk, his Jin, his Claudio. So this is going to be very interesting because um, D Jules has been a consistent performer, and I want to see what happens when an immovable object like Dojin meets the unstoppable force that is Jules. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, How about you, Raf? Oh, well, like you said, uh, Jules is a very stable competitor. Uh, again, he had the nickname of the Shield of Omega. He is a very defensive player, and there's also a lot of match familiarity between Dojin and Jules because they played with each other for such a long time, even, uh, you know, the land before the Nationals, way before. So it's going to be an interesting matchup to see how they're going to surprise each other if Dojin is going to continue in his signature uh, style. Uh, the same can be said about Jules as well. If he's going to go for the more defensive or is he going to go for a lot more setup-oriented offense? Now, nakita na natin maglaro itong mga players na to from uh, previous conference natin uh, of Tekken 7 dito sa The Nationals. Alam na natin yung play style nila at iba pa, no? But, do you think are we gonna see something different this time around? Now, alam natin na uh, si Dojin nga, he's on, a, he's on a roll with the bingo character thing, right? So, mm -hmm. he uses every every characters that he can use na sa tingin niya, paboros para sa kanya. And uh, do you think he got a hand of these characters right now. Kasi yung iba nating mga players, of course, you watch yung, uh, yung kalaban ninyo and then you realize na, uy, ito yung playstyle niya. But with Dojin using a lot of characters, uh, what's your input about this? Poch, go ahead. You first. Yeah, we saw in his previous match, and you see his only loss in this record was against Coffee Prince. And the Lily pick didn't really get things going. But... As he, I think he faced someone else, then he went back to the Lily. So it's a double-edged sword, him having this character bingo, because sometimes the character matchup doesn't pay off. I, I spoke to him yesterday, and uh, I think until now, he doesn't know yet until he sees the character select screen which character he's going to be using. So uh, he lives and dies by that sword. I support it since it's gotten him this far, but we'll see. How about you, Raf? Well... Definitely, Dojin has a wide area of characters. We've already established that. But another problem with that is the mentality of swapping from one character to another. Let's say, like, he plays Jin. This is just an example. Let's say he plays Jin and then he goes for someone like Xiaoyu on the next. There's going to be a warm up period because those are so thematically different and have such a different uh, moveset that it might take a while for, you know, we're only human. Even the Doctor of Techonomics is only human. So there's going to be that adjustment period. And <laughs> that being said, him just sitting down and deciding on the spot is going to be a matchup nightmare for anyone he comes across because if he doesn't know who he's going to pick, how do you think you're going to pre uh, predict it? Yeah, tama naman kayo guys no. And speaking of yung mga mga characters natin na ginagamit no. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Dojin, we have the Leroy trend right now mm -hmm. going on. Alam natin yan simula day number 1 natin. We are on our third day and we are expecting a lot of Leroy picks for today. But uh correct me if I'm wrong, Dojin never used Leroy yet. Am I right? Correct. So, he do you think we're going to we're going to see Leroy from Dojin today? <laughs> Uh, that's gonna Baka be very insider. dangerous. <laughs> uh, if, insider feed kayo. To be honest, I think Dojin knows how to use Leroy. I don't mm. know if he's in the mood to use Leroy, but if he is, that's gonna be one very dangerous Leroy. Ooh, interesting. Uh, Raf, may dadagdag ka pa ba with that? Leroy for Dojin? What do you think? I mean, I'm the type of guy that I really love watching the entirety of the cast so watching like Leroy five times in the same day is just really not my style and I hope <laughs> I honestly hope that Dojin just doesn't feel like playing Leroy today or you know for the rest of the season if uh, for that matter because we see him enough 
Uh, but mm-hmm. you know that aside jokes aside Lyra is a very strong character he's incredibly well-rounded it's no joke playing against him especially in the hands of Dojin who's a multi-character specialist what do you do when all the best tools from all the different characters are in one character like Lyra you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, speaking of characters guys no ito isang importante uh, question ko para sa inyo we know there's a big difference between playing online and on site maliban yung sa pag feel ng uh, yung mga tao na sumisigaw and everything mm-hmm. nice kapag uh, inside ka or on site ka rather but uh, this time around do you do you have uh, any input whether Meron bang mga characters to look out for na merong advantage when playing in an online mode? How about you, uh, Poch Pies first? Uh, well, I was able to talk to some of the players and they've noticed that the trend online is to fa- it favors aggression more than, you, let's say, chipping away at your opponent, really fishing for something. It's really dictating the pace of the dance. So that's why Leroy is such a great pick. Aside from him dictating the pace of how the offense is going, he has very great tools and easy execution. So your mental stack in terms of executing combos, it would be mm-hmm. actually pretty easy in ter- if, for long sets if you use Leroy because you won't get that strained. Aside from that, uh, with the trend I see, I, I think Devil Jin is a pretty good fit as well with his Hell Sweep, constantly keeping the pressure if played at the right hands, like how Vermillion's playing him right now. Mm. How about you, Raf? I would like to... In um, oops, <laughs> my bad. I'm getting too excited. This day is just... <laughs> It's already so hot, I can already tell that the Tekken actions could be even hotter, but I think I want to go with the more legacy characters, although I'm not going to discredit the strength of the newer characters. Warang, Xiaoyu, Lei even, very strong uh, in this type of environment. Um, just the potential to mix them up. Like, like you said, it, the theme is offense. So what do these characters have? They have a lot of offense. They're very slippery. They have a lot of evasive properties that could, you know, maybe tilt the players, uh, shift the mental warfare in the uh, Warang user and whatnot. Um, I would say Steve is also a very good online character just because of the unrelenting pressure. Very good frames on him as well. So there's that. I mean, it's all about the character right now, but have you thought about yung mga stages natin? Mm. Meron ba tayong makukuhang advantage when it comes to stages pagdating sa online? Or is it still the same? Huh? Ikaw muna, Raph, this time around. Hmm. I would say the stages don't uh, affect the uh, online or offline. It just depends on who's playing on it. Uh, for example, although we've moved to an online environment, one of the most picked uh, maps we have is Forgotten Realm, which we saw so much of in the first episode and, of course, in the second uh, second episode as well. I think the main culprit for that is, of course, Signal Ultra Warriors Vermilion. He's been picking that as his, uh, la- as his um, how would I put this? his shield, his uh, stronghold for his Devil Jin because it really enhances the damage that Devil Jin can do with those floor breaks. And the same can be said when it comes to King, Armor King, and all those characters that have uh, floor-breaking enders. Mm-hmm. How about you, Poch? Yeah, that's been a trend. Also, I think it depends on the player uh, and what they're comfortable with and what they've been labbing. Cave Enlightenment also is a, is a pick I feel like uh, w- that would be represented m- a lot, or if not, maybe Forgotten Realm. But yeah, those sages that with floor breaks, balcony breaks are always a go-to for you to really enhance the damage of your combo. Okay, gentlemen, ito na malapit na tayo magsimula. Ang isa lang na tanong ko para sa inyong dalawa. Our first match, LPE Dojin versus SMO. Jules, who's your pick? <laughs> ito na yung, Ooh, <laughs> ito na yung tanong spot. na papa. Ooh, mm-hmm. lahat, no? So, Raph, ikaw na muna yung bibigyan ng chance para sagutin yung katanungan na ito. Raph, oh, no. who's your pick? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Both of these guys are like, I'm, I'm fairly close to both of them. But mm-hmm. I gotta stick with my guns, you know? Mm-hmm. As a uh, Jin main as well, I gotta go with Jules. Mm-hmm. I- I'm sorry, Andre. I love you, but like, <laughs> I gotta stick with my guns. You know, character loyalty. Okay, Jules for rap. How about you, Poch Spice? I'll go with the other side of the coin. I'm gonna go history repeating himself. Dojin does have a positive mm-hmm. record against Jules, so I think the Doctor of Techonomics is in, and he's gonna, you know, just do, do what he does. Okay, sure. Jules, para kay Raf and para naman kay Poch Pies, eh si Dojin, malalaman natin. Well, magsisimula na yung uh, ating first match of the day, maya-maya lang. Kaya relax lang kayo, guys. Stay put lang kayo and magsisimula na ang The Nationals in a bit. We're gonna see you again later. Dojin has possibly one of the highest win records of the uh, the Nationals, uh, right next to AK, with a 63% win rate. And look how many characters he has played. 37. That's right. No number to you know, look past. 
And hopefully his stock might even go higher this season when it comes to characters because I think he just missed a few last time. Mm -hmm. But I think he really is looking to round it out. But looking at these characters, we have Law leading the pack with a 92% win rate. I think that's the highest we have on the entire roster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. They're followed by Claudio and Yoshimitsu. So you see the wide array of characters. He's got an exorcist, a martial artist, and a space ninja on his back pocket. Not to mention the characters that we highlighted before being Leo Lily. So it's really, he really exemplifies the Mocha Dojin nickname. And we are going to introduce his opponent, uh, the, the person that he'll be locking horns with today. It is uh, SMO Jules. Yep, and Jules with the signature Jin, 70% win rate on 66 matches with uh, with Jin. 42 ma matches with Bob with 50%, not too bad. And 13 for 13 with Claudio. So Claudio's a bit lagging behind in the pack, but no fear. Still a very strong character pick for Jules. Jules is also only a percent behind uh, Dojin in win rate. So this is going to be a very, very close match. As you can see, it's an 11-9. Not too much of a difference, but hey, mm -hmm. things can change. Yeah, especially with Jules, has he's been using other characters. We saw him use the Claudio. Also in day number one, we did see him use the Martyr. But over there, you see his calling card, his signature character, him being the Jin of the Philippines. Will he bring that out today? Again, it really depends on, I, I don't know, how he feels, I guess. Because how do you prepare for the unknown when you go up against Dojin? Definitely. And talking about Jin, Jin is a character that is very deliberate. You do all your moves with a very premeditated uh approach to it and mm -hmm. talking about premeditated look how focused these players are they're just ready to throw down no mm -hmm. distractions whatsoever just looking at the screen i'm down i'm ready yep they can cut attention to the knife dojin just uh giving a smile there i think they're checking their buttons check to ensure that they have the best possible game that they're uh, where they're going to showcase to everyone here watching at home so that's dojin versus jewels whoa <laughs> i wonder what, what happened <laughs> there <laughs> but you see how stoic how focused jewels is it's all about business he wants to get more points on the board. He wants to jump ahead. He is tied with uh, more people in the pack uh, for in, in seventh place it, it, with the score of seven. I mean, so That's wants to jump up. Uh, he's been a consistent performer, been in the top of the standings. So wants to keep it that way. That's right. And talking about that seven-point competition, there's just so many of them, and uh, Jules definitely wants to break the mold. He wants to get a head start and um, playing against Dojins definitely not the easiest thing in the world considering Dojin as he is on top of the world right now when it comes to the standings and his character versatility so the matchup the matchup knowledge is definitely going to be constantly checked when it comes to playing against Dojin mm -hmm. and just a bit of sneak uh, just a bit of a sneak peek to the second segment after this match Dojin will be in the second segment with a featured match of the day which is against Vermilion so he has a long road ahead of him after Jules going against Vermilion so a pretty busy day for the doctor of techonomics Yep, his all his appointments are in line and are full. But talking about the uh, just the match ahead uh, mm -hmm. with Vermilion and Dojin, it's crazy to think that in one day Dojin is arguably fighting, I would say the interchangeable uh, top three, you know, uh, including mm -hmm. him as well. Very true. Uh, again, he has, he's got a target on his back. Uh, people know that he's one of the eagles that want to get shot down. So with that comes a lot of pressure. So we're going to find out today if he's going to rise above that pressure and get better. Uh, I was able to talk to Dojin yesterday and how he feels about his performance. And he's feeling very happy and confident coming into this day number three. And I asked this madman which character he's going to pick. He still doesn't know. So I'm pretty sure he's deciding on the spot now. You know what? I wish I had that confidence. You walk into a tournament, you sit down like, hmm, I don't even know who to play, but you know what? I'm going to do whatever. I'm going to do me. And that's just the kind of mindset you want like, and the confidence you want to bring because half of the battle in Tekken is mental. And if you think you're going to lose, you know, you've basically thrown half of it into the, in the trash. Yeah, the mindset cannot be emphasized, uh, cannot be emphasized enough with this. Uh, I, I always say that there's a method to his madness. He can't explain it. But it's it's there because it's when oh, it's he there. when he is in when he is uh, in the loading screen he's already psyching himself up for him to perform at his peak. So I'm really excited for this matchup. Yeah, and it's uh once again it's really interesting to see someone super methodical when it comes to Jules with his playstyle. Uses a lot of the data to how the data is supposed to be used. He's a man of numbers. Meanwhile, Dojin is I would say despite being also a man of data, he is more on instinct. He is more on feel. Uh, you could say he uh, prepares more for the player instead of the character. That's something we've touched on as well in the previous episodes. 
Mm -hmm. That is true. Uh, shining some light on Jules, I was able to talk to his fellow Omega, his brother, uh, Pika. They they are going slowly but surely as they go through this conference. Since it is a new environment which is online, they want to go for consistent performance. So they, they admit they're still adjusting to this uh, new environment. But rest assured, these are the Omegas, ladies and gentlemen. They are Terminators. They will go back to the drawing board. They will tear their game plan down if they feel like it's not working and build a new and better version of it. And that's the crazy thing about the Omegas. They're very consistent. They're not afraid to try new things. And they're not afraid to start over uh, no matter how deep they are into the season. And that just makes them super dangerous because they're not stubborn. They're hyper adaptable. Mm -hmm. Like Poch said, they're Terminators. They're <laughs> machines. And I like what you said, that uh, Jules being the shield of Omega really just playing that I think that exemplifies his play style and his role in the Omega team he is the foundation and he is also the immovable rock that uh that Dojin has to penetrate through to get uh to to keep his place at the top of the standings definitely and much like the rock uh Jules does not want to fight any jabroni so mm -hmm. fighting Dojin it's definitely going to be a tall order. Honestly, I'm just super excited for this matchup. It's just a clash of playstyles, you know? Mm -hmm, that's true. And also, I was able to, when I was talking to uh, Pika, he did say that they will stick to their own tier list. You've seen the Omegas. They, they, they realize the viable characters. They know the Leroy's. They know the Fakumram's. But they would rather go for a style that, they would rather go for characters that exemplify them individuals or as their, their own play style then go for the vi the top meta pick yeah you could say they're the hipsters of the nationals <laughs> but that's just another um unique part of their identity like you said they are very methodical they're very scientific so in their mm -hmm. science they've figured out something possibly the other players haven't or rather the other players haven't delved into as deep as the omegas and we yeah. might actually see that in full swing um you know today and moving forward yeah, and I, I think that comes from, and you could probably back me up on this, as being a gym name as well. If you're a gym, you kind of have to, you, you have that that pride about yourself so that you need to know all the matchups. And you see that put on display when, when Jules uses the character. He's very methodical with how he approaches the matchups. He doesn't really throw out anything out too risky. And he really wants to mentally chip you down for you to make a mistake and give you enough, and you give yourself enough rope for him to hang you in. Exactly. Jin is a very complete character. Um, the punishments from 10 to 16, he just has all of it, even up to 18. But Jin does have a glaring issue that uh, his arm range isn't very good. But <laughs> Jules has done such a great job of remedying that with movement, playing mm -hmm. it compact, and using his uh, lock frames to maximum extent. Mm -hmm. And Just to refresh everyone's uh, memory here, the the record is 11 to 9 in favor of Dojin. So will history repeat itself or with the Omega will the Omegas come out on top? Well, mm -hmm. again you already know the answer, well my side of that, but <laughs> honestly I would love to see Dojin throw more curveballs, maybe like just pick a character from this uh, screen alone, maybe see the Rogue Nina, maybe mm. the Zaf the Zafina or maybe the Wild Miguel, you know, we haven't seen Miguel yet. We have yet to see Miguel, and you know what? I, I know that Dojin, uh, the whole character, the whole roster is his pick. What are the chances of us seeing a Leroy in Dojin's roster? I think Dojin is one of those uh, players that it's surprising to see him pick Leroy. It's like, oh, out of all the characters you know how to play, you decide to play Leroy. It's, it's just he's that kind of player, you know. It's just mm -hmm. super interesting to see the thought process or. Um, how would I say this? The very last minute thought process of Dojin just sitting down is like, hmm, okay. Yeah, what he feels today. I, I really want to get into his head and really just find out, yeah, how he connects two and two together with how he was able to come up with, let's say, like last week, the Leo pick or the Lily pick. There was some knowledge he had that he wasn't comfy with a Leroy matchup. He started out with Lily, then he switched to Le Leo. So, again, if, if you're Dojin, going up against Jules you know his characters you or you have a, a you have a snapshot of what you think uh, Jules might throw out so now what do you do so the ball's pretty much in Dojin's court on which character he'll bring to the dance I find it interesting as well that he picked Leo considering Leo's offense well some Leo's really anchor their offense in the back one to uh mixed mm -hmm. up that Leroy can easily nullify with this godlike parry that just dodges virtually everything in the game but 
talking about Leroy and talking about the matchups, we are heading Ooh. right into a Noctis. Okay. Very interesting pick here. We have a Noctis, a, a very ranged character, and Jules with one of his signature characters, which it being the Bob. Interesting pick. Interesting is definitely the word we are looking for because out of all the characters, Noctis actually completely slipped my mind. I even forgot this mm -hmm. character existed in this game. And uh, just to point out, I would actually think that Hapon would bring out the Noctis since that is his other sub-character. But we're seeing Dojin display this, so let's see how uh, this uh, Jules' Bob is going to fare with the range of Noctis. Mm -hmm. And a bit of a uh, bit of lore here. Uh, the previous Omega in Geo was actually a Noctis player, so the matchup might be in favor of Jules, but it does look like Dojin's taking an early lead pot. Mm -hmm. Early chips are uh, going spear fishing. Engine blade to keep Jules in the corner, but nice jab to get out of it. Little pressure alleviated. He got the duck down there. Oh wow! Gets the shield bash, and still Dojin with the flurry of offense. That's right, and bringing swords to a fist fight is definitely being super advantageous, but that wall splat is going to chip away at a bit of health here. Jules does have rage available, so this could be a free mix up. Oh! Super sized missile rage art, but no, Dojin is able to catch him as he was in the back. To Again, the wall was not in Jules' favor. Dojin scores the first round. First blood, if you would. First blood indeed, and now they're still slugging it out. There's not a lot of movement here, and Dojin actually letting the whole string rip here, just trying to enforce a full duck mix-up, but Jules could not capitalize on the whip. Mm -hmm. And now you see that he's controlling the center of the stage, really wanting to bully Jules to the wall. Not if he has anything to say about it. Nice break on the throw. And now Jules just backing away, trying to find the pace of the match, and that's one of the hell sweeps that Bob can present to the table. And 30 seconds have passed, and all these 30 seconds have been outright brawling, but so far, both players standing strong, standing tall. Dojin does have a de life deficit to work uh, around. Mm -hmm. And now Jules with his defense, putting up, like, there is a slight life deficiency with J uh, Dojin. Now he's in the red. Big block, though, from Jules and Dojin, trying to close things out. Can he get it? Oh, just a sliver of health, but he slaps him back on the wall. Round three. And good thing Dojin didn't go for the uh, Rage Art. Noctis Rage Art is notoriously wonky on this stage. It can go uh, a little bit off to the side here, but it does look like Jules is trying to chip away at those legs this early. Mm -hmm, trying to step away. Just Again, Jules is just trying to get death by a thousand cuts because Dojin, wow, he finds a huge launcher. Big shots coming out from Jules. Gets the wall splat and makes sure he capitalizes on that. And look at all that health just disappear, the uh, blink of an eye. Dojin, though, he's still fighting back, trying to push Jules back to the center, alleviating this wall pressure. Mm -hmm. And the supersized missile to that follow-up gains Jules that first round. Let's see if he can continue that momentum. And that was a wild, wild move by Jules there. No punish on the duck here. Excellent defense by Dojin so far. And another beautiful punish, sending Jules to the wall. Mm -hmm. And this has been the home territory for Dojin. Just pressure against the wall. And look at that. The, uh, one of the emo sweeps of uh, Noctis <laughs> gets that round down. Dojin showing everyone that he can run with this character. I'm honestly very surprised to see how Dojin was um, approaching this Noctis because Noctis is also notorious for having, uh, I would say, subpar uh, close up game. He doesn't have any tools to stop the pressure. And I guess Dojin's like, hey, you know what? If I can't stop him from pressuring me, I'm just going to keep pressuring him. Yeah, exactly. Taking the fight to him. And uh, I want to echo what you said. Yeah, Noctis uh, has been regarded it lower in, in professional players' tier list, but Dojin making sure that uh, he is viable in the right hand. So that was a crazy start for Dojin. It is 1 0. Now the question is would Jules be switching characters, or will he still be sticking with Bob? It's definitely curious uh, to think that the tempo of the first set was super upbeat. There's ba basically 30 seconds of nothing but slugging. Uh, maybe in his mind, maybe the Jin parry is going to come in handy. Just make Dojin uh, second out. Question. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, question himself. Thank you. Uh, question himself if he's going to press all those buttons or, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's also the Marduk as well. Uh, there's also the Claudio pick, which uh, I think paid dividends in his previous matchup. I, I forgot who he faced, but he, he does have that Claudio in his back pocket, his Jin, and his Marduk. Or, I don't know, Pika did tell me that there may be a curveball pick. Who knows? I don't know if they're going to bring that out just yet. Or maybe it depends. I mean, this is Dojin we're talking about. 
Dojin indeed. But honestly, I want to see the Marduk. Uh, who do you think out of Jewel's pool? Which is, um, I would say, well, everyone's pool is limited compared to Dojin. But uh, looking at those five characters that we talked about, who do you mm -hmm. think Jules is going to pick more uh, most likely? Mm, he could. Uh, there's this chance that he could just adjust his bob. But I'll go with I, I'll go with the Claudio, probably. Claudio. Claudio's yeah. a very strong pick. A lot of mm -hmm. plus frames. Could yeah, lock si down the Noctis. Sidestep four, you know, just keep chipping away, going for those uh, genocide katas when he needs to. And you know, uh, as I think I, I caught what you and were talking about before, him having that that invisible meter, if you would. Was that what you said? Yeah, the starburst. Yes, exactly. So that could be he could use that in the factor against Noctis. Definitely. And the thing about Noctis though, Noctis does not have any uh, weaknesses when it comes to range. Obviously with the forward 2, will catch you from basically full screen. He's a down 1 plus 2, he's down back 2, and basically he's spear thrust. So mm -hmm. this could be an issue for Jules trying to come in with um, uh, with Claudio. Seeing how running 2 is a great move, but it's a high, you know? Mm -hmm. Very true. Mm -hmm. the, the Ira, running Ira. Also, if if we would if we would say that this would be a Jin pick, uh, as we mentioned before, the range would be a factor. So let's see who Jules locks in with. Best of three, Dojin versus Jules. We know Dojin's with the Noctis. Who does Jules got? Ooh. Oh, all right. We were just talking about this. So let's see how he's going to circumvent the range of Jin for him to close out that distance and take the fight to Noctis. And talking about the Jules Jin, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of um, honestly, it's fair to say that Jules is arguably one of the best, if not the best Jin here, and probably the most adaptable as uh, we've seen in the previous season and uh, this season as well. Mm. Yeah, it, it that's not a bold statement to claim because he has been performing really well with this character, and we're going to see it in display now in the Cave of Enlightenment. So balcony break and a floor break afterwards. This is going to be a lot of damage. The hook fist there isn't the electric one, so the plus frames aren't on the side of Jules. He is taking the early chip damage, and Dojin with another beautiful punish. Mm -hmm. Jules making sure he's calculating his offense as he's coming in, because Dojin can steamroll the damage if he chooses to. Now Jules just slowly piling it on. Oh, tried to go for a wild rising punish there. But look at that, Dojin just not giving him any room to breathe. Definitely, and Jules trying to catch him with a big counter with the back threes and the forward fours, but Dojin isn't budging at all. The Switch player just try to get him off him, but that low HP is enough for Dojin to chop his legs off. Mm, yeah, it, it, this Noctis is really relentless when it comes to damage, and Jules slowly chipping away. Nice axe kick finds its mark, introduces Dojin to the wall, splats him, nice savage sword ender. And a beautiful adjustment by Jules here. Jules tried to let that parry rip, but Dojin uh, knew that was coming and basically just held his ground here. Now Dojin looking a little more hesitant than we've seen in the previous rounds. Mm -hmm. Now I think Jules starting to get going. Nice hop kick, and now, now uh, getting him to the wall. Didn't even need to complete the combo. Just stared him down. Mm -hmm. So now it is back and forth. Raf, nice movement there from the uh, evading the warp blade. And now they still stay at the center. We still have a balcony break to use, Raf. And that was a big, big drop by Jules here, but so far no momentum has been lost, or at least nothing consequential. Now the down back fours are coming in, trying to collect those plus frames, but Dojin hard-headed contesting them. Mm -hmm. And now, see, this is, yeah, he just wants to just catch you with something and change up his timing. Watch out. Nice, the stature kicks are finding its target, axe kick. Oh, spends the drive, tries to switch things up. But nice punish on Dojin's side. Dojin is bleeding red and he's going to get him with a mid. And just like that, match point for Dojin. Bit of a heartbreaker there, but Jules is still in this. He has to be careful though. This is um the set point for Dojin. Dojin still unrelenting offense here, being super sticky. Yes, uh, just smothering. He feels like you're fighting in a phone booth when you're with Dojin. Nice movement, Jules. Fighting his opening, trying to make it count. And Dojin slowly backing away and still ready with the punishes, going spear fishing. Engine Blade once again for more plus frames. Swipes again at the legs. Jules able to contest. And just like that, Dojin keeping his record untarnished, 2 0 wing Jules. That was a big, big punish there. Very good reaction time by Dojin and a very good read as well. And maybe the reason why Noctis uh, was wearing all black because that was a 2 0 funeral. Unfortunately. Mm. Yeah.